Hey guys, welcome to Fangs TV. Uh, today I'm going to show you this mechanical mom that I have back behind me. Kind of explain what it is, what it does, the purpose of using one, and basically how to create one. There's all different types of variations and ways to do it. Uh, this is just one on here um, that we'll go through. So sorry if it's not the most interesting video that I ever put out, but it is pretty specific. And uh, hopefully this will really you know, help the community because uh, there's not a ton of videos out there. A lot of people have them, but a lot of people don't have videos on them. So let's get into it. All right. Okay, so firstly, what is it and what is the purpose of a mechanical mom? So what it is essentially is an incubator for tarantula eggs. Um, you can use it in varying stages, um, mostly while the eggs are still in development, before they hit the eggs and legs stage, or first instar. Uh, a couple different things that we need to replicate, basically what a mother tarantula would provide. One is a constant humidity and temperature from the outside world. And the second is going to be rotating it. So unless you have like a baboon species that lay a hammock style sack, um, traditionally the spiders are gonna have a ball type sack where they're gonna actually rotate it because those eggs are very soft and basically gravity is going to, um, you know, kind of push the weight down on them. So they rotate the ball and what that's gonna do is keep pressure off of it and keep the eggs fully developed. Sometimes if you ever see like a little clump of like hardened eggs or, you know, that's obviously like either say unfertilized or just they've kind of been like mashed down, they've been at the bottom and she hasn't been rotating them that much. The other really, really important part is the fact that now your eggs are in here and if the mom gets stressed out, she's not gonna be eating them, which is really, really important. So um, basically what we have here on the outside, right here, is a temperature and humidity controller, okay? Down below that, this gray box, essentially that's turning what is going to hold your egg sacs. That's going to be replicating the mother turning them, okay? And then on top, this crazy little contraption here, that's just to provide a constant amount of humidity. Now we do also have a heating pad inside for the heat. We have a couple different variations. You, I've seen people do infrared lights or heating pads. Well, I like the heating pad a little bit more because you don't have to worry about a light bulb burning out. Okay, the only thing that I didn't really introduce in this particular one is just like a fan or a source of airflow. Um, there's a couple different schools of thought on that. Uh, one is, I mean, with a lot of these tarantulas, unless it's arboreal, typically it's gonna be in a deep burrow and you're not gonna get much airflow down in there anyway. Um, I haven't really noticed, I've done these in the past. I've built these with extra airflow. It doesn't really determine um, how they turn out. Now, obviously you don't want it so damp where it's you know starting to grow stagnant mold or something like that. So there is a, a, a fine line in that. Um, so basically what we're gonna do next is uh, kind of just show you a little bit inside and outside and then we're gonna show you how to build this. Okay. So on this particular one here, we have just like a locking front door. It's got a seal on it, but you know, that's not the most important thing. Um, we have our heating pad here, uh, right down in the bottom. I use a small size heating pad. It's basically the, the smallest that you can get. I think it's like four by six inches. Um, and that you get it through Zoom it or, or whomever. I'll put a link to some of the products that I use so you could find them a little bit easier. Now you see our uh, humidity adjustment just kicked on because this door is open. Um, here is our carousel that's holding our eggs. Basically what we have in here is some holes drilled for some ventilation and we also have strips of soft uh, Velcro. Basically when this cylinder turns and the egg sac hits that a um, little bit of Velcro that's going to help rotate the sack a little bit more as well. Uh, what we have down here in the inside corner is our temperature probe and our humidity probe. Okay, up here in the corner of our box, that's where our humidity is being fed. Um, and I also have this really nice tray. This is actually this is kind of how it came built already. It's got some holes in here too for airflow through the. Uh, Basically what I'm gonna do with this is after these have gotten to like the first stages, 
like um, like maybe first in star or so before they hit second in star, or if I open it up and it's still eggs with legs. Uh, I'm gonna take this container here, put coffee filter in it, or you could also do the stocking method. You cut this out, you put a stocking over it, um, and you had them sit on there. But essentially, uh, smaller containers of these, but about this height, and I can actually store them in there uh, while they're developing, and I also have the egg sacs in here. So if I'm using the smaller size containers, this one's a little bit bigger, uh, I could probably get a maximum of about eight egg, egg sacs in here at varying different stages. So, um, yeah, that's basically what that is, um, you know, the purpose of it and, and basically how it's set up. Um, now, what I want to get into is a little bit more of the technical stuff, and that's what I'm going to go through next. All right, cool. All right, first off, I just kind of wanted to get a little bit better shot of what was going on on the inside here. Um, I essentially drilled two holes here one there one there this one is having the uh, heating mat and also the temperature probe go through it and this secondary one here that is for the humidity control so we can see here uh, if we zoom in um, that is where I have the humidity control and the um, temperature control we just have a small size heating mat there I just have held down with velcro we don't need to get crazy with it uh, in case I ever need to move it for whatever reason I can do so quickly um, and here is essentially our carousel that I was talking about. Um, found this on Amazon, really, really convenient. Now, I mimicked the exact one that Rob C has out there, and hey, Rob C, if you're still in that tarantula world, I appreciate everything that you've uh, taught us. Uh, definitely has saved me a lot of party with um, tarantula egg sacs, as well as just other knowledge about tarantulas. So shout out to him. Um, he's built a lot here and uh, really been a wealth of knowledge to the community. So um, they used to have these little type of stackable like bead containers. Uh, I actually found this on Amazon and this works just as well if not even easier because you don't have to break apart any center sections. If you watch his video you'll know what I'm talking about. Check that out. Um, but this is basically just molded plastic and we can unscrew these and each one is going to hold our egg sac in it. So, open that up, yep, another egg sac, and then one here in the top. So, obviously you wanna use a little bit of common sense. You have an egg sac with a thousand eggs, that's gonna go in the larger size one, versus say like, you know, say you're breeding a pumpkin patch or something. That's gonna go in there. Okay, uh, really simple. I just drilled a hole right there in the center of it. This is a 3 8 threaded rod, okay? You pick that up in any hardware store or even online. And it has a nut on either side. Uh, basically what that nut is doing is keeping that rod from coming all the way forward. Uh, aside from that, basically, like I said, it's got the Velcro strips on the inside. And every so often I just drilled a little hole for ventilation. Get that temperature and humidity in there. So as this machine runs, this is going to turn just like this. Okay, it's a little bit too slow to actually catch it on camera unless I do a time lapse, but that's essentially what that's doing. This is going to make one full rotation in 24 hours. Um, the older style that we used to do, they had basically like a four four turns within a day. Uh, it looks like they don't make that model anymore, so we're kind of stuck with what we can get as far as our ability to rotate these. Okay, so that is that. Um, the humidity control is really self-explanatory. I just got this here. It's a it's a reptile mister uh, with a control on it. I have it set on the minimum because you don't really need to pump a lot out. What you could also use is like a fish um, tank aerator and a, a mister system that works just as well. Also, I just drilled a little hole there in the corner of the tank, and that's where the mist comes out. Now I did put a drip, drip loop on the back, so if there's any uh, water actually holding, um, basically that is going to collect right there in that little loop right there. Okay, um, aside from that, we're gonna get into the actual controls of the machine now. Okay, so what we have here is our temperature and humidity controller. 
really easy to function. There's a set button right here, and you could set your temperatures up going to be up here, and your humidity down here. Depending on the species of what you're breeding, that's going to determine where your settings are going to go. Okay, one plug is for your your heat, one plug is for your humidity. Now you might see this funky little brown plug here. Basically, I had to cut off the plug on the heating mat so that I didn't have to drill a giant hole to fit that plug that plug in in through this incubator. Okay, if you have something set up for ventilation or you want to cut a big hole in it, that's perfectly up to you. You don't have to cut that off, but you could pick these up at any Home Depot and basically you just cut the end off and rewire it. Okay, if you're not comfortable with wiring, please stop. Okay, do not wire this thing if you are not comfortable with wiring it. Um, there's all different types of styles. They all get wired differently. Um, obviously there's risk of electric shock, so don't mess around, be careful with it, okay? Let me spin this around here real quick. Okay guys, this is the most intricate part of the entire thing, which is to say that it's not very intricate once you've built a couple. Like I said, I've done a couple of these, so I kind of knew what to prepare for. Only the last one that I did was a little bit different style. I accidentally ordered one with a metal disc versus a plastic disc. Um, either one can be um, changed over. I was thinking about returning it, but I was like, you know what, let me see if I can make it work with this metal one just for argument's sake in case I ever need to in the future, which you can. Okay, so first things first. Um, you're gonna take a metal grinder and you're actually gonna cut out a square, okay, uh, where this is gonna rotate. And basically that's just to get clearance. This thing isn't made to have this um, fishing rod holder on here, okay? So it's not made to have that. So when this is closed, that's actually uh, in the way, okay? So you need to cut that out to get a little bit of clearance. Um, also, obviously the hole for your 3 8 rod to go through, okay? And then the only other thing on top of that is I put a couple nuts in between the tank and the acrylic enclosure and this uh, just to give you clearance when this is closed so that um, silver piece isn't hitting the tank and scratching it up. So there's a couple spacers in there, just uh, 5 16 spacers and quarter inch by one and a half inch bolts here. There's three of them here, one, two, and three, just so that it doesn't sag or anything like that and it stays pretty straight. All right, so to get into this part here, this just comes off of here and basically this is what controls the timer. So, um, focus. Okay, so this is a 3 8 threaded rod holder. Okay, you can find them online, they're, they're very super cheap, okay? And basically I just have some screws in here uh, holding it in. Okay, it doesn't really matter what position this is on the dial. Uh, basically, you're just gonna screw that in, but make sure that the screws are not longer than your gear wheel, okay? So that's your gear wheel on the back. And obviously, we still want clearance so we don't mess those teeth up, okay? Just have some self-tappers in there, okay? And basically, that is going to stay on this rod which turns this motor in the back. Um, basically the way that this is wired up, we have our ground and then our white and our black wire, okay? This is set up over here, so basically if this timer were on, uh, when this goes around, it's gonna hit an on or off and it's gonna switch on or off and turn on whatever you have wired over here. That's not what we want. We want a continuous rotation, so we have our power going on constant we have our knob set to on, so this dial will completely turn all the time, will never turn off. So it's, you know, originally designed to be a, a timer that turns a functioning electronic on and off. We're not doing that here, obviously. Um, this goes on in any position, so that's really easy as well. I'm just gonna slide that on. Okay. So that slides on, just like that. We're gonna close the case up, just like this. Then we're gonna thread that 3 8 rod back through with our container on it. Super simple. Um, 
One thing you're also going to need these come these don't come wired, so you just go to the uh, you know any hardware store. Or I picked it up on Amazon, a uh, basically a 12 gauge or 14 gauge plug um, to go put on the back here. So so just like that, we wired up our plug. Okay, that was those wires that I was showing you in there. That just comes right in there, wired up, and that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, really, uh, any other type of questions, just let me know. Uh, like I said, this is the second one that I built. There are different variations you can do on it. Like I said, you could put in more, um, you definitely put in more ventilation. You could change the size of the heating mat depending on the volume that you have to heat. Um, as well as the this is this is like overkill on the humidity honestly like this thing only comes on once every maybe twice a day if that so the humidity wise that's a little bit overkill i might end up changing that in the future but temperature wise that little heating mat does fine especially if you have your room already temperature controlled um basically it's just to keep it at a constant level versus varying um that's really the only difference so all right so All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions or uh, you want to build one on your own, let me know. I can always help you out or uh, even kind of consider building it for other people. Um, basically, the cost of these things, uh, once I have all the um, different uh, components, probably around like 400 in materials or so, but it all depends on what you build it with exactly. And more so the price of the acrylic boxes is the bulk of it too. Thanks for watching, tune in next time.